you know, those are the two main ones on the top of my head right now in LaSalle. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of talent around here. Cool. That, that's, uh, I said, I've never been out that way, but, uh, <laughs> I've got a buddy who was out there uh, and he was obviously gutted because he, he had a chance to go see a Reds game, but he's, uh, he works in uh, the fine arts and he, okay. he had, uh, the audio and stuff like that there. And everyone wanted to go to the, uh, there was some museum, I can't remember what was there, but he could see Riverfront Stadium across the way. Uh, I'm trying to think what museum. Yeah, that's uh, Cincinnati Art Museum there. Up on yeah. The mm-hmm. Yeah. And the whole group went there and he said, he could look out the window and he's like, right the stadium i could just go yeah, mount, mount adams there man it's it's uh it's it's up there you can look down and see the whole skyline it's beautiful so uh skyline chili i said is it, is it a thing or not <laughs> it's definitely a thing here oh yeah we like i like gold star skyline what camp washington it's kind of a there's there's plenty of them i like them all i like i like it so is, it, is it just the sauce on top of noodles or what is Pretty it? much, yeah. It's noodles with the with the chili. I don't I guess the southern people don't call it chili. It's more like runny whatever, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's soupy, but it's uh yeah, we just pour it on noodles and uh, put cheese cheese on top. It's delicious. So uh, they're competing like so the only reason I'm asking can compare this to like cheesesteaks, you know, there's a two cheesesteak places that claim they're the best. So yeah. I, 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 so I get, uh, I like, buy a lot of shirts from uh, Homage, and there's always Skyline Chili shirts there. And I'm kind of like, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're out of Columbus, man. I, <laughs> I, I love their shirts, uh, and they're great. And But I'm always getting the adverts from it in my email, and it's like, what's the deal about Skyline Chili? <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a Cincinnati thing. But yeah, I mean, my wife... <laughs> I like Skyline. That's that's probably my favorite. And then, but I, I really like Gold Star. My wife was a Gold Star fan. I'm just I couldn't believe it. But then like, I started to like it a little bit more too. So they're both they're they're different, but they're they're the same. I don't know how to explain it. They're definitely different though. So is it like a sit down restaurant, or you get it for takeaway? Yeah, or? it's a sit down restaurant. You can sit down, order cheese conies, hot dog with the chili on top and the cheese. And, it's just like any like going anywhere else, right? No, okay. I mean, it's just one of those places I've always heard of, and, and of course, I, I don't know that many people out that way. Or actually, you're probably the first person I've ever talked to out that way. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I mean, you just ask all my questions, and never because usually what happens here is everyone's like, "Oh, you're in Scotland." All right. So how's Haggis? I'm like, "Yeah, Haggis is really good." <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh no, it's it's pretty po- it's definitely popular. I mean. It's, it's good. It's some people don't, when they first try it, they're like, I don't understand it, but I mean, I kind of grew up on it. So it's, you know, it's, it's home. <laughs> exactly. So, so there's a drink out here in Scotland and, and I have this bottle here and this is, this is called iron brew, right? So oh, <laughs> all right. Right orange. And John, John's got his bottle there. <laughs> He's got a bottle too. <clears throat> and, um, it kind of tastes like cream soda. That's like the best equivalent. I can kind of say okay. it is there. And it's one of those things that like, it, it's the only thing that else sells Coke in, in like the world. And uh, everyone goes up on it. And it took me a, a while to kind of acquire the taste for it. But yeah. Yeah. It, it's just kind of like, I don't get it. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's, that's, that's how this, that's how Skyline Gold Star is like, I don't really get it. I mean, I, I've had a couple of buddies come down and uh, they just tried. They're like, I don't really like it at all. It's terrible. I'm just like, <laughs> More for me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, no, it, it's always those, those kind of regional things that that way. Um, they do uh, they do a pizza supper out here, and so they take mm-hmm. a they take a pizza, a frozen pizza, and you fold it in half, and then you deep fry it, and then you eat it that way, and then you get a bunch of fries on top of it. And I was yeah. just like, <laughs> yeah, deep fried pizza, yeah. And, and then I tried it. I'm like, oh, okay, it's actually all right. <laughs> I'm gonna say that sounds pretty good. I'll eat it. That sounds great. So yeah, there, there's all said. It's one of those things when I get people coming over to visit, I'm always like, okay, we're gonna get you to try haggis, uh, the deep fried Mars bars, which are really good. <laughs> and so it's like a Milky Way bar. That's the equivalent. So it's like a Milky Way uh, bar, deep fried, and it tastes like warm chocolate chip cookies. Like oh God, no. And- oh God, no! Deep fried Mars. Oh, what? No, they're good. I've had like a deep fried. <laughs> yeah, that's the <for> money. <laughs> um, so, Steve, my favourite band is from Ohio. Uh, my favourite band's from Dayton. Are you a Guided by Voices fan? What was that? Are you a Guided by Voices fan by any chance? My favourite band are from uh, Dayton, Ohio. 
Uh, I'm not familiar now. No? <laughs> I'd recommend you check them out. They're so niche that even even Ohioans don't even know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I'll have to, I'll, have to, I'll check them out. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, they're, I mean, that's literally up the road. I mean, I'm 75 here, so. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> it's one of those bands that are big in Europe, you know. <laughs> Not really. They're just kind of they have fans and dotted around, and I happen to be one of them. Um, yeah. Yeah. Guys. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm ready to go with you guys. Are I got a lot of fans on the internet too. <laughs> yeah, on, on your only fans page. Yeah, exactly. Wow. <laughs> <He's a driver. laughs> this is not um, the Friday night show. Come on, this is this is the Monday night show. We're clean. <laughs> this is this is the we've been doing this for two weeks on an exhausted uh, edition of the show. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, hello once again, everyone. Uh, this is part two of three uh, this evening um, of the it's day two actually of the uh, fundraiser. It's been live since yesterday. Uh, the Negro League Museum Art Fundraiser. We've got another talented artist involved in the project on. Uh, we'll be talking to him just shortly. Uh, I'm John McKellar, one half of Ball Caps and Bagpipes. And I'm Jason Durr, former league president and Baseball Scotland Hall of Famer. I'm also the owner of Dugout Classics. Which, of course, is where you can get your £5 or $6.50 raffle tickets. Uh, do you want to quickly go over no, no, no. uh, two raffles? Let, let him talk about him. Like I said, like, I, I spent enough time on social media promoting the damn thing. Uh, I don't want to talk about it right now. All right, let's get to it, man. Uh, we have Steve Collier on the show. Steve, welcome. Hey, how you doing? It's great to speak with you, man. It's a pleasure to meet you. Um, yeah. We always like to start our interviews off with the same question, and that's just uh, look at your baseball background growing up. Um, did you... Background? Yeah. Did you play growing up? Uh, if so, to what level and uh, you know what positions did you play? And also, do you follow a particular club? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I played pretty much my whole life. I uh, grew up in, obviously in Cincinnati here. Went to Princeton, played in high school, uh, played shortstop, infield. I was a pitcher. Uh, and then I went off to college, played a year in college. And to this day, I still play. I play in a like a 30 and up league and uh, um <laughs> It's a beer league, but it's it's fun. Play with the guys, and uh, you know I still pitch, and uh, I actually also play vintage baseball, um, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with. They uh, they play eighteen sixty nine rules, with no glove, and uh, it's that's pretty uh, pretty wild and intense. So yeah, I've been I've been playing my whole life. I love it. It's one of one of my passions. Cool. So you I'll, mentioned I'll, uh, I'll, I'll also coach varsity baseball too. <laughs> I forgot. Also, <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned, amazing. Uh, sorry, uh, so you mentioned the uh, beer league baseball. Uh, now, a guy we spoke to recently on our podcast, Graham Nelson, uh, kind of got involved with baseball originally through beer league in Australia. Um, beer yeah. league is not something I'm familiar with. Do you want to, for uh, folks over here who might not know what that means, uh, explain the uh, beer league baseball? Uh, it's pretty much you, we all go out, enjoy, have a good time, you know, have a game, and then afterwards. We, drink beer <laughs> that's all it is no as you know so actually the question about that is i want to know do you play metal bats or wooden bats uh they're metal i mean i'm sorry they're wood bats it's a wood bat league that's that's all matters like i said yeah as long as yeah. you play the wood bats yeah it was it was crazy you know I, I didn't play like you know i played in college a little bit and then i stopped and then once i turned 30 i had a, a coach of mine he's like do you want to play in a 30 and up league and i was like yeah, let's let's go. Let's try it out. You know, they, they threw me on the mound. I was like, I haven't pitched in forever, and they're like, we don't care. Just throw throw strikes. So that's what you do. Just you know, just be thankful to be able to play and not get hurt. So do you, do you have a favorite bat you like to do? Because this, this is one thing we started using wood bats in about 2006, and so I went through a couple of different bat companies that I went there. So you actually have access to bats. Where we're kind of going, well, I can get loose with a slugger, and they're going to last a game or two, and then they start doing the research into other bats. There, <laughs> there's a ton of bat companies in here that make awesome bats. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, whatever feels balanced. I like a balanced bat. So I mean, I, I got a few got. I forgot the name. I have a couple of sluggers that I found at like a yard sale that were perfect for the, for what I'm doing. And, you know, I, I go to Reds Fest and, you know, on the last day they mark down like all these player professional bats and for a good price and I'll, I'll grab a few there. So, you know, anything that just feels comfortable, I'm, I'm good with. 
So you say you went to you go to Reds Fest. Are you a, a, I guess you're a Reds fan, being from Cincinnati. Right. Yeah, I go to Reds Fest. Do you have any uh, particular memories uh, of the Reds growing up that stick out in your mind? A favourite ball game or anything? Oh yeah. Uh, take uh, you I, mean, back? Obviously, I was uh, I was five when they won the World Series in '90. Uh, my parents mm-hmm. went to that, but I, I remember that watching it on TV. Um, probably the most recent game was uh, the, the game where Jay Bruce. Uh, hit the walk off against the Astros to clinch. I think it was 2010. That was, mm-hmm. I was at that game. That was just, the atmosphere was crazy. And just, I don't know. I haven't seen anything like that in a long time here. So that was probably one of my favorite games to go to. That's Do you fun. have a favorite Reds player then? Reds player? Oh yeah. Barry Larkin, uh, you know, growing up, love King Griffey Jr. He's obviously my, you know, favorite player growing up of all of baseball. Um, Tom Frazier recently like him a lot. Votto's, I mean, I, Eric Davis. I can go on. I like a lot of Reds players. So, but yeah, Barry Larkin for sure. How good do you think Eric Davis would have been if he never got hurt? Um, shoot, man. I mean, he was on track to be <laughs> pretty damn good. I mean, he was, you know, he had all the tools. He's fast. He could hit for home runs, and I mean, he was he was legit. He definitely would have been, uh, you know, might have been knocking at the Hall of Fame there. You never know. Yeah, I think so too. I think he, I, I liked watching Eric Davis play. I, I think all those uh, AstroTurf uh, stadiums killed everyone's knees in those in the '80s. Absolutely, turf toe and all that. It was, you know, I, I, I you know, you admire Barry Lark even more. You know, I know he had a rough. You know, he probably could have won more Gold Gloves with Ozzy Smith. You know, but I mean, also just playing every day on that turf, I just it's unreal what he did. So I was asking you so. You obviously mentioned your high school varsity coach there. So when I grew up in, in Seattle, we played on turf for our, our practice field. Obviously, games were on grass. I was curious how it worked for you. Do you guys have a turf field or do you guys play on grass? Oh, no, we we play on grass. We're trying to get a turf field. I know, like, because our seasons are in, in, are in March or whatever, in April, and it's super wet, cold, snowing. And, uh, yeah, we still have grass. We, we occasionally go to the football field because it's turf to practice on, if, you know, to stay sharp. But – no, we have we have all grass. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're not missing much. Like I said, other than like you know uh, uh, getting the true hop on there. But yeah, it was John. John's there played on turf, and so we had a discussion about this. Was it last night or two nights ago? And so we were trying. Yeah, I think to- just last night actually. Yeah, just last night, and we were just trying to describe that there. So knowing that you were. Coach, I was actually curious because Northwest is wet all always. So if you didn't have a turf infield, you just weren't going to yeah. get any green in. So yeah, our. <laughs> What stinks about our field is the training tiles don't drain the field very well. So if it rains, it's over for us anyway. But I mean, yeah, turf, I'm just practicing on it. I, I like it. I mean, like you said, it gives us a good bounce. Like you can, you know, you're probably going to get a sure hop other than, you know, our grass field. You never know what kind of hop you'll get. But yeah, it's it's something we need here in Cincinnati too when, when it, during those season, baseball season. It's it's cold and wet. It's crazy. You should you should feel the ground ball in Glasgow, Scotland. Um, our infield has so many bobbles and, and weird uh, hops. It's incredible. And the yeah. council here only cuts like around the infield. So like uh-huh. you'll have like the foul foul area and like the outfield will be like cut, but they always leave the diamond as if they think, oh, we better leave this <laughs> for them like to play in. And it's like, my God, you should do it. It's, I mean, the other <laughs> way around would be fine, but. <laughs> Jason, I'm sure you've you've seen some horrible hops over the years at the Glasgow field. Well, Glasgow and just the UK in general. So just to give you <laughs> yeah, to be fair, yeah, um, <laughs> having a pitcher's mound is a luxury. Like a lot of, a lot of places don't actually have a pitcher's mound, you know. So um, yeah. and if you're lucky, if you can find an old cricket field um, to play on, because it's at least flat. Like we played one yeah. year on an old rugby ground and they just tear up the ground. So again, like you just don't know where the ball is going to go. Um, but actually it reminds me you say that. So one guy was playing third base and he dove for a ball and it took a funny hop <clears throat> and it hit him in the jaw and it broke his jaw and locked his jaw. So he couldn't actually speak. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They're down. <laughs> Cause I feel, I just third base, man, it has the probably one of the nastiest lips there just because of how the kids like drag it and, and it's, I mean, it's bad. So it's like, you know, you make me upset. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. Just go play third base and I'll go hit you some fun. Go see how that works out for you. You know? 
Well, no, that, like I said, at least you have a proper field. Like I said, yeah, a lot <laughs> yeah, of that, it, yeah, it's proper. <laughs> I mean, honestly, though, we, it's nice. It's it's actually a stadium. So for inner city like Cincinnati, it's like, it's it's got the, the walls. It's 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 a nice, beautiful stadium with lights. I'm not gonna hate on it too much, but it's 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 nice, definitely for sure. No, cool. John, you got another question there? We're gonna jump into the art. Or... Um, no, let's let's talk about uh, let's talk about Steve's art. Right. So uh, you obviously you're you're a teacher. You're you're uh, varsity baseball coach and where do you find the time for your art and how did you get started uh find the time for my art i guess i don't know just uh on the weekends and stuff like that uh i got started when i was younger you know drawing baseball players baseball cards and um eventually I, I discovered i had a kind of a talent um i didn't i didn't really utilize it till probably my college in the college years uh I went to school and then uh, decided to major in it and uh, take some art classes and and uh, develop it into to what I'm doing right now. Um, one of my favorite artists, you know, was a Sia Payne, Chris Payne, uh, illustrator. He's from Cincinnati, and uh, I don't know if you guys have seen his work, but he's phenomenal. And um, there's a lot of good artists around here in Cincinnati that does sports stuff, and they're, they're inspiring. So. You know, I just continue to practice, you know, in my sketchbook, just little stuff. I try to do a drawing a day to just keep sharp, you know, because it's something I'm passionate about. So you, you mentioned your sketchbook. I actually saw your post earlier today and you had uh, Miss Jojo comment saying that she was too afraid to, to, because you're doing it day in, day out and you're doing this job and she was worried that she'd screw hers up. So is it that complicated? No, I don't think of it that way. I mean, to be honest, I feel sketchbooks are supposed to be ugly, you know, they're they're kind of like you're, you're teaching, you know, you're teaching yourself what to do. It's there's certain things. So um, I just, you know, I just don't think about it. You know, you try to do your best on it and, you know, if it comes out good and hey, you did something, if not, then you go on to the next one. You know, you try, you're trying to get better at it. Do you have your sketch for candy? Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah, well, why don't you show a couple of the pictures? Cause so, so yeah, I've been following, uh, is it Josie Tellier for a while? It's French Canadian, so I'm always afraid to pronounce yeah. it completely horrible. Yeah. I just, if I say Miss Jojo, everyone knows who Miss Jojo is. So. Right, no, so yeah, I mean, I don't, here's the most recent one I just did. Um, cool Papa Bell here. Yeah, it's, I saw that you working on that one, yeah? Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. and then, uh, oh, right here, I got, so I try, I do a Reds countdown. So I start, I don't know, like that's what I was trying to do before all the, everything shut down. So I was trying to draw a few players here. Like I got Bartolo Colon. I did that one. Big nice. Sexy. Um, <laughs> you know, the Michael Jordan documentary, the ESPN or whatever. I did something, you know, Jordan kind of a. Nice. Yeah, so like I said, it's just a technique that I've been learning, and then I've been just continuing to develop it. You know, and Brandon Phillips is another favorite of mine. That dude, that's cool. So, and here's a few paintings in the background of Rose. The iconic slide, the iconic head first slide. Yeah, classic. So anytime that Pete Rose comes up, we have to ask, uh, where do you stand on Pete Rose to the Hall of Fame? You might be a little biased, uh, obviously, with that caveat. Where do you stand on that? I mean, I, he's to me, he's a Hall of Famer, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, the guy's got, you know, 4,000-something hits, and he played forever. I mean, he's and he just played every position. And, I mean, he's, to me, a Hall of Famer and, a, and you know, world champion. So, I mean, I know he's – He's got his issues with everything, but I mean, I, I don't know. I, I feel major league. I think he's done his time, you know, for what he did. And uh, I think they should put him in at least before he passes away. Cause I know he wants to do that. So for me, um, sorry, you said uh, for, for me, fundamentally he shouldn't go in. However, baseball seems to pick and choose. Right. Aren't you? Um, and there's a lot of things that have happened in baseball that baseball seems to be quite happy to overlook um, yeah. in recent times as well as before. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's harder for me to say 
with all that considered that he just shouldn't go in. As a player and look, looking at his stats, he's the old time he's the old time hit king and will continue to be for a very, very long time. He right. was a multi time world champion, like you say. Um Charlie Hustle was his nickname for a reason. You know, he played the right. game hundred percent every day. Right. He's a Hall of Fame player, maybe not a Hall of Fame person, but there's a lot of Hall yeah, of Famers but... who weren't. So it's that was gonna a great column and Hall of Fame player, not a Hall of Fame person. I totally agree. I mean, I feel if he came clean with what he did, you know, I feel that this wouldn't be an issue, but I mean, he kind of, you know, he did what he did and, you know, but as a player, like you said, for sure, Hall of Famer, yeah. without a doubt. Yeah, he's, he's like an Alex Rodriguez character where he's yeah preeminently talented and messes up and it's he gets his, he gets his, he gets in his own way all the time. It's like every time that he has maybe a chance to uh, yeah. come back, he gets in his own way and, and just won't stay kind of in the straight and narrow long enough to get what he he's obviously, that's what he wants. He's made that public knowledge that he wants to be in the Hall of Fame before he dies. Right. He, he needs to he needs to face what he's done. Yeah. And then and then they can start to have that conversation instead of like he's kind of approaching it from the opposite way and it's, right. it's not likely to happen that way. Um, but like I say, Considering a lot of the things that Major League Baseball's pulled in, in particular in the last year or two, um, he's not, he's, you know, he's not betting on betting on games isn't any worse than stealing a World Series, for instance. Yeah, three years I, ago, I, you know, I it's mean, like I mean, I, I mean, I know steroid era, era whatever, and the, the, the stealing of you know cheating or whatever. I mean, I'm to the point. It's like I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can gamble on baseball games now. You, you like you said, you're there. Very, I was, yeah, I mean, gamble on it now. They ever they take adverts from gambling companies on there. So yeah, I, it's it to me. Like I said, he's done his time. So you yeah. know, move on from him. I mean, he's in the Reds Hall of Fame. So which you know that was a big thing here in Cincy. So so when they have the Reds Hall of Fame day, and all that, I know Pete has to ask for special special permission to go to those games. How big of a day is that? That um, I've been to a few. That one was that was huge. That was a huge day. I mean, the bobbleheads. You know, he spoke and the city was going crazy. They, you know, they made had a statue, you know, made for him. Him sliding head first, pretty much that pose right there. And I'm loving that was, picture. Actually, it's amazing. Yeah, it was. It was. Actually, <laughs> yeah, they gave a key to the city. Pretty much. It was pretty. It was a pretty big day. It was a good game. It was. It was a fun day. So it's funny you mentioned key to the city. So uh, how how many people ask you about Jerry Springer since he was the mayor? <laughs> yeah, he was. I, I, yeah, he was the what? I actually, Jerry Springer's yeah. he was the mayor of Cincinnati. Yeah, he was mayor of Cincinnati. I remember him being on uh, Channel Five News. He was a news anchor too when I was younger. So I remember on that, and then he did his show what? thing. What age is Jerry Springer? Old. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, he's like he was old when I was a kid. I think he was yeah, here since hey, then he had this show, and that's how it went from there. So, oh, he was a news anchor. He was a news anchor for like one of the local stations, and then yeah, then he got a show. Ah, that's okay. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because you mentioned the key to the city, and then it just ring a bell. I was like, yeah, Jerry Springer was mayor. Yeah. Oh yeah, Jerry Springer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So. um We'll go ahead and ask you about what you're doing for the Negro League Hall of Fame and what you're doing there. But I'm curious. So, does Cincinnati have a very rich Negro League history? Did, did say when you're looking at players, or did you kind of find players that you were naturally drawn to and go that way? Um, I kind of found players I was naturally drawn to. I know, like there was the Cleveland Buckeyes, but that was pretty far up in Ohio. Um, you know, I just I kind of I like to when I do my art, I kind of like to look online for pretty de decent references to to use for my artwork and. Uh, I, I'm personally into these the, the players' nicknames. You know, I, I think that's pretty cool to see some of these nicknames. I know, like, uh, for instance, like, uh, I think his – I wrote it down. Maybe. His last name was Plunk, and his – I mean, I'm sorry, his first name – maybe is it Bill Drake? Yeah, Bill Drake, his nickname was Plunk. Right. I thought that was yeah, like, sweet. He's, like, 6'10 and huge and – the fact that your nickname's Plunk, I would never want to get in a box with you, you know? <laughs> so. That's, that's, that's not when you hear when your pitcher's name's Plunk. You right, know? I, I don't know, yeah. I was just, I don't know. The nicknames, I, I've been looking at those and seeing references, and then I'll just go from there and just start working on it. 
Cool. Was there any other nicknames that uh, stuck out with you? Or was that just the one that you automatically went, all right, I gotta uh, learn more about this guy? Yeah, Blanc for sure. Um, because what we've been finding is when we talk to the artists, they either have a, a vague reference of Negro League, uh, usually from um, Ken Burns' documentary. And then uh, they're like, okay, well, I've done my research. And I said, the, the research part of things has been the more fascinating thing. And then obviously to be able to take a picture and turn it into you know, art. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I like the smoky, I like the pictures. I mean, that's just the smoke. You, you just can tell these guys could, you know, they were, they were feared when they go to the mound. The fact your name is Smokey Joe, you know, Plonk, Bill Plonk there, you know. Um, there's a few others. I just don't have them off the top of my head right now, but. You know, cool Papa Bell. You know, that's I, I think that's just a <laughs> live, you know, nickname. Yeah, the nicknames are obviously really cool. I would say I'm not gonna lie. I was, but it was just interesting. It's become this reoccurring theme with talking to everybody. They're going, oh, like I didn't know much. I've done the research, and it was, I found the research really fascinating there. And it's just like, I, I, but I gotta get my art out in time for the fundraiser. So it's been this catch twenty two. Right. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, I try to try to read a little about them, and then. uh you know, try to, you know, develop something there and hopefully I can capture their likeness and, and move forward with it. So what is it uh, you produced for the fundraiser here? Uh, right now I've, I've, I've done a lot here. Uh, I got at least, uh, shoot, everything. What I'm trying to do is just these, these sketches out of my sketchbook because, uh, you know, I, I feel that they're, Obviously, they're originals. Um, I try to make them a fair, you know, price, and then, then donate the money, obviously, to the to the museum. But I got at least uh, oh, at least twelve of them, twelve to fifteen. And I, I try to do at least two a day or so. So. And you're finding the time being a new dad to do two a day, huh? Yup, yup, yup. <laughs> So John didn't catch that part of the conversation. So John's a fairly new dad, but uh, so you guys probably have that same issue. So, but J John, John's got game probably more sleep than you are. <laughs> yeah, my, I just got. I mean, he's two now, so he's just he's a bundle of energy, just you know, wanting to play. I, I love it though. So does he already have a glove and a bat? Oh yeah, he's been uh, he's been swinging that bat. He loves the bat. I think he's left-handed too. So you know, gotta have a <laughs> left-handed batter and thrower. You know. So he's going to be a lefty pitcher, huh? Yeah, without a doubt. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> you know that I'll get to cheer him on putting the home runs out of the porch at Yankee Stadium one day. Right, yeah. yeah the short porch. <laughs> like any park is just got to be a lefty with the short porch. Mm. Especially yeah. in America. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <definitely>. <laughs> cool, John, do you want to ask your question and then we can get to cards here? Yeah, sure. Um, so, Steve, we like to finish up our interviews each night with uh, the same question. Uh, that question would be, as an American and as an artist and as a baseball fan, what did the Negro Leagues mean to you? And uh, how did you come to be involved with the project? So, uh, Tad reached out to me on Instagram. And uh, what it means to me, I, I just I feel like these guys, these players need to, you know, the recognition they need. You know, these guys just, you know... I don't think they get the recognition that they deserve. You know, these guys were actually, you know, they've been through a lot. You know, they went through a lot. And they, they, they're reading their bios and hearing from, you know, Hall of Famers how talented these guys were. And, you know, they should be, you know, they should be broadcast just like any other players. And, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm happy to be able to, to just, you know, learn, develop my, you know, use my arts to hopefully capture, you know, their likenesses and uh, you know raise some money here so this museum can continue to move forward to 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 teach uh, you know baseball fans or anybody about these players. Have you had the chance to go to the museum yet? No, I I was in Kansas City. Uh, it was it was real quick because I, I I like to I'm trying to see all the baseball stadiums. So I was in Kansas City um, to see the Royals play, and uh, we kind of. We were only there for a little bit, but everybody was telling me about it. I had some barbecue, and then I shot out to just back to St. Louis to check out that stadium. So I want to get back there one day. I definitely want to see it and, and check it out. So uh, I'm going to ask you another question on this. So how many stadiums have you been to? And when you go there, do you keep score, or do you have drawing? No, I, 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 could, I kind of collect the lapel pins. I've been to – what's the 30 stadiums? I've been – 
I don't know. I can't. I, I know I'm missing Colorado. I'm missing Seattle. Um, because that's really close for you, you know. It's just right on the corner, right? <laughs> I, I've been to most of the West Coast. Like I've been all the West Coast there, like Arizona, all the, the California teams. I just need Seattle, Miami. I need a lot of Midwest, Minnesota, Milwaukee, and then uh, Houston and, and the new Texas Stadium. That's about kind of where I'm at with the in Toronto. I need Toronto. Oh, so so that's that's good. Good. No, I, I went to uh, Wrigley for my 40th, but we, uh, Milwaukee's only an hour and a half north. And so we actually flew in and caught a Milwaukee game like straight from the plane and then drove back to Chicago after it was done. Yeah, everybody says go up to yeah Chicago and then take the train up there. You know, I, I, I have a buddy that lives up there. I need to get up there one day because I've, I've been talking about it because it's pretty, it's reasonably close. It's funny you say about uh, Wrigley. I think a couple of years ago, um, the Reds Museum reached out to me and I did a, uh, um, a painting for him of, of Tom Browning when he was sitting on the rooftop. It was the anniversary. Right. So that was pretty cool to do for them. And, and that, that happened actually on my wedding anniversary when he did that. So it's like July oh. 7. They, uh, they offered me to go up there to, to Wrigley that day, but I, I guess like, I don't think I can. It's my anniversary. So <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, like I said, like uh, I know what you mean. Like I'm having my 15th anniversary on, on Friday, and I'm like, I'm kind of podcasting that time. <laughs> She's just like, oh. thanks. <laughs> That's right. My wife, she was nice. She's like, yeah, you can go up there, and then, like it was super expensive. Like I wasn't gonna, you know, I had to pay my way, and I was like, no, nah, I'll just I'll just stay down here. I don't want to be in the doghouse. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so to be Smart fair, <laughs> we, we have two wedding anniversaries. So we got a blessing in scotland which you consider our wedding day but then we actually went to las vegas and got married 10 days later so oh wow yeah so because there's two foreigners in scotland you have to get a visa to get married and you have to get another visa to actually properly get married so wow. we're, we're just like we're just gonna go to vegas and get married in vegas and and yeah so so I was gonna say, and, you could get married quick in vegas <laughs> yeah it didn't take much my wife was crapping herself <laughs> because we literally went in to get the, the wedding license it's like all right you're good like we don't need anything else it took like five minutes you know it was like right. here's the money here's your name like she made up a social security number because they asked her that and she's like i don't know what it was i made one up it's like i didn't even care <laughs> that's awesome oh cool so if you've been to all the stadiums you have one that uh, one of your favorite ones what was that you have a favorite stadium that you've been to favorite stadium um so i like i like dodger stadium a lot i i, I didn't think i would but that place is pretty that's pretty impressive there. I like Dodger Stadium. And then Pittsburgh's pretty good too. Yeah, that's come up a few times now. Everyone says PNG Park's actually really good. Yeah, it's it's I mean it's a nice atmosphere. You can see the skyline there and it's it's a nice place to watch a baseball game. But I, I think Dodger Stadium, I think that took the cake. I mean, I was when I went there, I was like, you know, I was I don't know. I think what the coolest thing, I think they were playing Milwaukee that day and uh, I guess they do like a theme Dodger dog. So like they had this cheese curd Dodger dog thing. And I was like, I'm going to get this. And it was pretty, it was pretty good. And then we were sitting out in left field there and in the sky. It was, I mean, LA, it was pretty nice out there. It was pretty sweet to watch a game. Cool. I'm quite jealous. I've, I've been to Dodger Stadium, but there wasn't a game on because it was December. And uh, yeah, so I can only imagine how much fun it would have been doing one of the yeah. actual games there. Yeah, but it was, it was pretty good. I mean, yeah, it was pretty good. Cool. And then we'll, we'll, we'll give you, we'll let you plug your social media website here. We got one more question for you. So, okay. so DH, where do you stand? Is it going to be in the, in the NL or not? Uh, yeah, I think it's here to stay. I mean, these pitchers can't even bun anymore. So why, why are we just wasting our time? <laughs> <laughs> me and my, me and my buddy talk about it all the time because he's like a small ball guy. He's like, the Reds need the bunt. They need the bunt and all this bunting. This and that. <laughs> Half these guys can't even bun anymore. They only mm -hmm. talking about bunting. Cause yeah. They don't really have to. They don't have to hit minor leagues in there and all that, do they? It's all everything's DH these days, from pretty much the kind of all the levels up, except the major leagues. It's got the DH rule, as far as I'm aware. Right. Yeah. Point, I, so. Yeah. I mean, I I like the DH. I mean, it's it's fine with me. I mean, it's just it's just kind of how we're baseball win. I, I you know, you, I do get a thrill, obviously, when a pitcher hits a home run. You know, I, I you know who doesn't love that and. Uh, you know, if, if, if I mean, we're not seeing the guys like Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin and John Smoltz handling a bat anymore. They're just, I just can think of Johnny Cueto just standing there, just taking, you know, strike one, strike two, strike three. I'm like, okay, that was that was awesome. You know, you could yeah, try to swing, but, you know, that's where it's at. Cool. 
All right. Well, why don't you plug your social media here on your website then, and we'll open up some cards. All right. So like my social media for like Facebook, it's uh, Steve Collier, Cincinnati sports artist. Uh, my Instagram is uh, Stevie C. 23 and then twitter is a uh, stevie c 2324 so great amazing so we, we, we plugged you on the on facebook out there so we'll hopefully uh we'll work out awesome. there great thank you uh, i've got seven packs of cards you get to choose one and you can see and we'll talk about the players here so awesome. I'm, a, I'm a junk wax guy so this is all the junk wax era there so it's funny i i, I accidentally came across one when, when you were talking about the upper deck ones you were open the 93 like i actually was watching those videos of you because i when i was younger i bought a we went to my mom went to value city and, and bought a box of 93 just cards you know and uh i was able to open all those up i got that jeter rookie you're talking about yeah like a few of them so it's cool that you were opening those up i was like that's pretty cool so yeah, it was just something to do because my buddy's got a card shop uh up in the north of scotland there and he was like i need a junk era guy so that's just nothing i know and i don't know anything about modern so it worked really well and i was like so we bought a card from like 1980 to i think about 94 mm -hmm. and then next week we started doing that i was like that was a lot of fun so that's like okay well what's gonna be something that might be kind of fun to do where we could actually pull a decent card that doesn't cost an arm and a leg now so, so right that, that's what we did like 89 diners and then we did the 93 yeah, upper deck. That, that, that 93 upper deck i love that was a good that was a good set i like that set There's yeah i'm excited of, about that I've, I've got another two boxes on the way so i'm, I'm gonna see, nice. see there, so. I'll, I'll keep in I'll, I'll watch that it brings back some memories i just remember you know mom got that box for us me and my brother and we just we ripped those packs a couple packs a night <laughs> so it's funny you see that because i actually reached out to homage because they were doing that wax packs wednesday thing yeah oh like, yeah I was like, guys, like, you know, I've been doing that. Like, what are you talking about? So I sent them a screenshot of everything I posted the last year where I'm wearing their, <laughs> wearing their shirt <laughs> they're and, on it, and they've liked it. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, you guys know I've done that. So they're, they're going to send me a free shirt because I'm a fan. But oh, right. I, I was kind of like, man, you're my t-shirt company. Like, where am I supposed to go for cool shirts if you guys aren't going to, you know, hook right, me they, up? Yeah, they got some good, I, I got, honestly, my whole poor wardrobe is a, uh, it is a homage. I love it. I got the new the Griffey shirt and a lot of red stuff. Yeah, they're, they're good stuff. They have a shop there. I know that they have a lot in Cleveland. <laughs> it's homage yeah, station. <laughs> yeah, there's they're they're from they're out of Columbus, but uh, there's there's one in Cincinnati. There's a couple in Cincinnati. Yeah, they just take all my money. I think. <laughs> yeah, they, exactly. I'm broke every time I go in there for sure. <laughs> so right. like in a homage section. He's got a homage to homage in his wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm the same way too. I got. They're a bunch of t-shirts. I love let's, it. Uh, yeah, let's let's crack some cards then and, uh, and wrap up. Cool. All right, I got eighty-seven tops, eighty-nine donors, nineteen ninety score, ninety-one studio, ninety-two donors, ninety-two pinnacle, and ninety-three studio. We'll go 93 studio. That was oh, right. Was, I love those cars. I, I the think glossy, these, with the glossy autograph, and then uh, we had a crazy whatever the back of the cards. I would say some <laughs> hate to face the Reds or hate to face the whoever. I, I do. I, I, I had I never bought these as a kid. So when I saw oh, these, I, I, bought, I bought these a lot. I love studio 93 and 94. I bought a lot of these. Well, I, I need to get some. We were, we were uh, talking to Les Weber of when it was a game uh, before we came on with you, Steve, and uh, we pulled a Fernando Valenzuela card. And it just said on the back, "Fernando has visited the White House in 1981." <laughs> <laughs> Great fact. <laughs> Needed to know that. <laughs> okay, I'm just kind of pulling a few of these out because they're all stuck. Because they... I was going to say that gloss, man. They keep them. Yeah, that's the worst part. Yeah, I got my. 2001 Bowman sent over and it was just a brick like that. So <laughs> it wasn't very good. All right. So the first person we got, we've got Blackjack, Jack McDowell. Jack McDowell. Yeah, I remember that card. Yeah, it's just said, what's his... Oh, that's right. He he was in a band. He he released a progressive rock album. I forgot nice. Blackjack was in a band. Nice. Yeah. I think it was out of Dayton, right? I'm just messing. <laughs> <laughs> Some good music. There's some good music in, huge in Europe. Huge in Europe. <laughs> Kim deals from Dayton, Ohio. Uh, Kim deal of Pixies and uh, Breeders is from Dayton, Ohio right. as well. We got catcher Don Slot, 
Nice but mustache. His favorite player, Johnny Bench. Wow. That yeah, makes sense. So, yes. He might have been a real estate developer if he, <laughs> if he wasn't an athlete. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I don't remember. Is, is, that, is, that like, is, that, is that in life ends at like 38 when he retires from baseball? Is like, I know I, I could have done that, but, you know, I became a baseball player instead. Like, just 38 years old, man. <laughs> I think he's a baseball player because he had a good mustache. Yeah. <laughs> Pet peeve was knuckleballers. So he was a catcher, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. So we got Jose Vizcaino. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jose. And his favorite sports announcer is Vin Scully. He liked Tony Fernandez and Ozzy Smith. And he might have been a pilot if he wasn't an athlete. Wow. No. no. Jose Vizcaino, he played for the Astros, I think, when I started watching baseball, am I right? He's played all sorts of places. Yeah. I remember with the Cubs, yeah. Kind of a John Newman type then. But they don't give the stats here, other than like... Uh, it's like a buy didn't, weird so. fact. Um, but we'll know this guy. Joe Carter with the Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, cool he likes golf and basketball. And favorite player is Willie Mays. And he might have been a truck driver if he hadn't been an athlete. Wow. <laughs> reach for the stars. Reach, reach, reach for the stars, Joe. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we got another Jose Escajano card. What? Oh, awesome. God, that's rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, we got a Kansas City guy, but he's a Cubs uniform. Willie Wilson. Is that Glenn Allen Hill? No, Willie Wilson. He was the center fielder for the oh. Royals for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, his favorite possession is his World Series ring, and he might have been a businessman if he hadn't been. <laughs> okay. What kind of what kind of business? Just, these these ball players. Just, what they like? Doing, he's just doing business. Just, yeah, just business. <laughs> just business. I, I think Willie couldn't be bothered with this because his pet peeve is eight ball. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's all it says. <laughs> I'm telling you, these, these cars just right in the back is just entertaining. Like, just all of them. They're just, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> I did, this is why I like these things. They're so much fun to read. All right. So, we've got Mickey Morandini for the Phillies. Gosh. Bowling and basketball. His favorite player as a kid was Al Oliver. His most prized possession is Olympic gold medal because he played for the 92 uh, Olympic team. Oh, nice. And he would have been a teacher if he hadn't been an athlete. There you nope. go. Oh, but get a good mullet too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, All those Phillies guys had good mullets the back there. <laughs> All right. Oh, there looks, like the, looks like the blog for his autobiography. That picture. Cool. We've got a Hall of Famer here. We've got the Wizard, Ozzy Smith. Yeah. Yes. There you go. So his hobby is backgammon, reading, and le- listening to light jazz. Um, his favorite player as a kid was Roberto Clemente, and he might have been an entertainer. Yes, it ain't no <laughs> Couldn't tie by all the flips he does. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like you're a pro baseball player, you are an entertainer. Some of these ball players, man, they're just yeah. But this is so you're talking about the '90s where you had kind of Charles Bartley. We're saying, you know, I'm, I'm not a role model. Mm, I'm not there. Yes. You, know, you know, you weren't yeah. you weren't entertaining people back in, in there. So yeah, you were. They were doing their job, I guess. I guess yeah. So definitely either. All right, <laughs> we've got Red Sox Billy Hatcher. A Reds player, '90s team. Yeah, so so he's his uh, his uh, nephew was my roommate in college. Really? Wow. Yeah. So uh, he, he's like, yeah. Do you know who Billy Hatcher is? Like, yeah, of course I know who Billy Hatcher is. He's like, yeah, that's my uncle. I'm like, all right, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I think he he'd retired by that time, so it wasn't any good. But uh, yeah, anyway. I think he was hurt. I mean, he was. Yeah, I remember with the Red Sox, but yeah, Ryan these Reds. So he likes hunting and fishing. His favorite player was Roberto Clemente, and he might have been a teacher if he wasn't an athlete. Wow. Oh. At we least he's a truck th- driver. We need yeah. to at some point go through all of these cards that you've got and uh, tally up how many times each player gets named everyone's like favorite one growing up and see who was the most popular among that class of ball players. Because Clemente has gotten a few now. Yeah, it's kind of that time. So we got Brian Harper of the Twins. His hobbies include weightlifting, basketball, and reading. His favorite player, the kid, was Ted Simmons, and his most prized possession is the Bible. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Might have been a, ba- a baseball coach if he hadn't been an athlete, and his pet peeve is smoking. Wow. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't remember him. 
I think he was like a backup catcher for a long time. I, I just remember like uh, the mustache and the hair. That's really about it. And that's that's nineties for you right there. <laughs> All right. You know you've you know you've made it when, when people recognize your mustache and hair before uh, your name. <laughs> your stats. <laughs> we, oh, this is a good one. All right, so we had two more. So we had Derek Bell with the Padres. That wasn't the Padres yeah. doing pretty good there. His hobby is fishing. His uh, favorite key player as a kid was Dwight Gooden. His favorite mm-hmm. most prized most prized possession is his World Series ring. Mm-hmm. But his pet peeve this this is great Kool Aid without sugar. <laughs> oh god i really really love those uh, padres uniforms from back then but i mean who, who doesn't have sugar and, and kool-aid i mean <laughs> I don't know. didn't they show like, wasn't it the anniversary of when the, well i don't know when they played that prank on him i think it was joe carter when they brought his car out or something oh no was, they, was that uh i don't know if you guys seen that or not i have to go look this up when we finish up yeah he had like he was he was super weird about his his truck he had and like oh yeah so like i think joe carter so they were like he's like i said he was weird about his truck so during the game they brought his truck out as a like a they were gonna you know for a prize <laughs> give it away for a prize and then he about losing his mind like that's my truck they're gonna give it away for a prize yeah, that's awesome that's amazing <laughs> that's greg maddox tier right there man all right, the last card here, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll jump into our next interview. So we got Brett Butler for the Dodgers. Oh, so, Brett he likes to do uh, golf and chase his kids. His favorite player as a kid was Willie Mays, and he might have been an actor if it wasn't an athlete. Wow! His Did he ever get a chance to be a cameo in a movie at any point? Or I'm guessing if he was in L.A., sure, why not? So yeah, maybe he got to live both his dreams. Yeah. So, but his pet peeve is laziness. So, wow. <laughs> okay. That was a good one. Steve, thanks so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. We can keep going on and we'll definitely have to open some more cards with you again soon. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That was fun. Thank you guys. <laughs> no thanks worries. so much for coming on, Steve. It's been a pleasure yeah. meeting to you and speaking with you this evening. Uh, enjoy yeah. the rest of your day and uh, all the best with the fundraiser and your items. Great. Thank you very much, guys. It was fun. Thank you. No problem. I'll thanks, see you later. All right. Bye bye.